see by the time the board actually came up. And, and apparently my racing is 1027. Sexy. So we're going to go ahead. Seems overrated to me. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and see if 900 is possible here. Can I get away with that? Yeah, sure. All right. I'm building some sort of... Does a capture count as a pawn move, Tom? If I use a pawn to capture. That should, right? Uh, it's still sure, a pawn sure. doing the capture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Five! We're going to get there before Tom does. That's the goal. Six. We're not stopping there. Oh, no. Seven. Don't worry, boys and girls. We got this. We got this. I'm going to make Tom toil for the rest of the show. Eight. I mean, I'm also getting into the world's worst position, but that doesn't really matter right about now. Nine. Ten. Can I squeeze more than ten out of this position? No, probably not. Alright, we're going with ten. Ten. Ten is a solid number. Um... I also don't like the fact that there's a knight invading my position. We're going with ten. Take that, Tom. I hope that makes up. There you go, for the, uh, for the weirdness in the last game. Ten consecutive pawn moves. International Master Thomas Rendell, I don't think so. Uh, he's putting his pieces on generally good squares. And to that I say bar humbug. <clears throat> uh, this could end up being a problem. I'm going to have to castle. But the important thing is I've moved pawns ten times. That's actually quite a good move. Be an even better move if I didn't have queen takes knight. Whoo! That was close. Ladies and gentlemen, well, chances are half the chat saw that tactic before I did, but don't even worry about it. We have the situation under control. Mm-mm. And that's why we all obviously go on the one move tactic trainer on chess.com. I hear that's a particularly useful tool. Why have I done that? Why? Why have I done that? Don't answer that question. That was a t right. We're swapping that off and castling. Wow, why did I do that? I just walked into hilarity. Hilarity is now finished. Don't worry. I've still walked into hilarity, haven't I? Uh, can I avoid going the exchange down? Can't. No, but it doesn't matter. We moved 10 pawns. Guys, like I... Rary? Can I not do that? Take, take. Take. I'm still in the exchange down. Okay. I can't really do much about that. Okay. We're doing this. I don't mind being exchanged down as long as I'm a big, big, big past pawn up. Is the plan. We have a plan. It's a strong plan. Also, the plan where my opponent has 20 seconds left on the clock. Okay, that's a big pawn. It does not take a genius to let everybody know that is a massive pawn. King's coming across. Uh, he's going to go ahead and attempt to take that. That's actually fine. Because I am going to be progressing along this flank here. And now I have connected passers. His bishop can't come and attack this anymore. I'm moving my king up to b5. He's got five seconds. I actually want this to continue. Come on. We're going with this is superbly technical chess. All right. Now do I get... I don't quite get a chance to play that move yet. Uh, but I can play this and move my knight back around. My knight's going to e7 via... Oh. And when's the last time you gained 115 points for winning a game? That is how technically unbelievably stupendous that endgame was. We're going to give you one more lesson 
in tactical supremacy in approximately the 900 to 1100 range before we go ahead and let Tom have his toys back. We're going to start with C3. We're protecting the center. We're doing a fantastic job there. I'm going to go ahead and block things up. Uh, am I? Yeah. Three? I don't really think we can beat ten. Can we beat ten? Four. There we go. Let's get him thinking. I'm sure this is fine. Five? Bad. Six. Seven. Eight. I'm running out of squares that don't lose instantly. We're no, we're sticking with eight. Tom still has ten to beat, guys. Come on. Like, give us some slack here. Tom's not gonna beat ten, by the way. Well, he might, but not before getting into a completely losing position. That much, I'm... V oh! Oh! This guy's watched Hack Attack. This guy has watched Hack Attack. What was... Yeah, okay. He says. Quizzically. I'm kind of okay with that. Alright, well, we've we've sacrificed a knight. That was the criteria for Vladmerk 44 on this week's hack attack, quite clearly. That was his objective. He successfully accomplished it. Now we're gonna go ahead. Oh, okay, he's taking back with the pawn. I thought he was coming in with the queen there. Uh, probably gonna have to start thinking about things like development of pieces in the near future. For instance, where the hell is my knight going? When it pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, queen back. Terrible. Knight, that's an interesting move. And I'm not normally one to turn down interesting moves, as you can tell by my rating. So why don't we go ahead and explore what this likely means for the rest of us. Right, so he's putting a little bit of pressure on F2. Unfortunately, he's doing it with the most powerful piece in the game, and therefore, not really caring too much about that right now. So we're going to go ahead and... Put a little bit of pressure back. Queen b3 attacks. Lots of things at once. Um, and of course, if Tom teaches chess players anything, it's always play the move that attacks lots of things at once because someone somewhere is going to make a mistake doing something. Um, wise, wise words indeed. And that's probably true. So this is looking vaguely acceptable. And we're going to bring a rook over to protect the knight. I'm looking for knight moves that put it on pre and look all cute. Now we've got the queen check. We have the queen check. Followed by tactics trainer mode on. Bishop b4 looks solid. He says, wondering if his opponent has any... What what intermezzos attack my queen? Not a lot of them. Cool! Ladies and gents, we have Ein Tactic. Right, if he's going to swap that off, I need to get my knight onto either d5 or e4, and I need to get it there now. Oh! Oh! I'm on 19 seconds. I see this guy's game. Okay. Let's go ahead and do some of that defense stuff. Uh, need a rook. This pawn is just so weak, it's kind of gross, to be honest. I want my rook on b3 to kind of shore up against everything. He might plant his rook on c2. To attack F2. That kind of ties me down a little bit, actually. No, he's not going to do that. Instead, he's going to give me a pawn for my trouble. 
which I respect and thank him for. Right, he does end up going there. We're going to see if we can't pressure him into... Oh, this looks vaguely promising. Right, so the bishop's out of there. That's cool. I've got d4. Takes, takes with the h-pawn. Okay, we're moving. We're going for it. We're going for it. Is he gonna... He's not gonna take me back. And he's got 1.6 seconds left, and that's actually a reasonable move. So because that's a reasonable move, we're gonna make him take the right way. Does he take the right way? He doesn't take the right way. And guys, it's fine. It's the pre-move defense. And we win on time once again. Now, that wasn't quite as technically astute as game number two. We only gained 96 rating points. Uh, but for those of you watching at home, Tom's gaining maybe two or three uh, rating points a game. I'm gaining about 100. I'll leave you guys to, you know, come to your own conclusions. But we hope you've enjoyed the educational portion of the show. And now we're back to some mindless hacking. We'll be back with part two after the break.